Ah, locked on magic. Don't you dare be sour. Clap for your world famous Southeast Division champs and feel the power. You are locked on magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's a new day. Yes, it is. Today is September 18th. It will be September 19th, 2024. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. My name is Philip Rossmanreich. I'm the senior writer over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at PhilipRR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, Tyrese Halliburton pokes the hornet's nest. Why the Orlando Magic's new rival made a big public statement and why we're so ready for that rivalry to begin again. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. If I didn't blow out your eardrums, uh, <laughs> we want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Magic is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. If you are confused about the intro to today's show, let me give you the proper background. Let me give you the proper context. So you can understand what we're going to talk about today, because what I did at the start of the show is the traditional opening for your favorite WWE World he World Tag Team Champions, the New Day. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. I'm wearing my AJ Styles shirt as I'm doing this pod. That was intentional because Tyrese Halliburton has popped up in WWE a few times over the summer. Back in June, he showed up at Madison Square Garden, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jalen Brunson in the center of the ring. No punches were thrown, fake or otherwise, uh, as they were separated uh, uh, separated at the time. Well, Tyrese Halliburton was back in the WWE Universe Tuesday night. He showed up at NXT, which of course is taped here in Central Florida, trying to get a contract signed between the challenger, Trick Williams, and the WWE NXT champion, all ego, Ethan Page. At the end of the show, Tyrese Halliburton went to the center of the ring, saying he was determined to get the two title contenders to sign this contract. And then he brought his backup, his Indiana Pacers teammates, in the front row at the very small venue that they have at the WWE Performance Center over in Winter Park. Tyrese Halliburton was not welcomed, however. He was booed roundly. And being the great heel that he is, Tyrese Halliburton said, I'd boo too if I had to cheer for the Orlando Magic. Well, ooh, that gets me in a dander. Ooh, brother, that gets me in a dander. Because them is what we like to call in the business fighting words. Feuds have been started with less. And while we can't take Tyrese Halliburton into a cage match, while Tyrese Halliburton did not get his comeuppance, because I'm sure part of the agreement of him being on the show is that he is not touched. And well, yes, they did actually eventually sign the contract with CM Punk agreeing to be the special guest referee when the WWE NXT makes its debut on the CW in October. Tyrese Halliburton has now made a new enemy. Oh, he's made a new enemy indeed because as we all know, the Orlando Magic and Indiana Pacers are the two best young teams in the Eastern Conference. They are the team's that are about to take over the Eastern Conference when the Boston Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers and the Milwaukee Bucks age out. It is us. It is the Celtics. It is the Magic. It is the Pacers. Maybe we'll throw the Knicks in there. They're a little bit older. But very squarely, Tyrese Halliburton was calling his shot. But the Pacers are indeed better than the Magic. Well, let's lay down the facts. Let's lay down the facts real fast. Yes, the Orlando Magic and the Pacers tied last year with 47 wins. The Orlando Magic won the tiebreaker because they won the season series 2-1, to one, defeating the Indiana Pacers 
uh, in game one in Indianapolis, very handily, leading by as much as 40 points in a 128-116 win. Nearly a month later, and in fact, Tyrese Halliburton remembered that loss when the Pacers were done with the in-season tournament, waiting to see who they would play in the next round. He hoped that they'd draw the Orlando Magic because they owed the Magic one. Well, about a month later on December 23rd, the Magic rolled into Indianapolis again and took as big as a 15-point lead in a 117-110 thumping. The Magic beat Indiana again in Indianapolis. That clinched the season series. That essentially clinched the five seed at the end of the season for the Orlando Magic. The Magic did play the Pacers one more time later in the season in March uh, or in February at the Kia Center, and the Pacers did win that game. We will concede that point, but it was one without Jalen Suggs, uh, I would like to point out. And while you're free to point out that the Magic beat the Pacers before the Pascal Siakam trade, the Magic still beat the Pacers. They still finish ahead of them in the standings. When you look at the record books, when you look at the playoff seating, the Orlando Magic beat the Indiana Pacers. Alas, it is a new year. And this rivalry between the Magic and the Pacers is just beginning because we are going to see the Pacers for a very, very long time. So my friend Tony East at Locked On Pacers, who came to Orlando for that game in February, and I will probably see him in Indianapolis in April. We'll talk about that game in a minute. This is going to be a major game. And whether Tyrese Halliburton realizes it or not, he has re-sparked one of the key rivalries, one of the great historical rivalries in Magic history. The 1994 Playoffs, the Orlando Magic's playoff debut, a three-game sweep to the Indiana Pacers. That was only made sweeter because, A, if you watch Winning Time, the Indiana Pacers' magnum opus, the the, the statement of their franchise, uh, the, the most meaningful contribution to sports, were those series against New York Knicks. As Reggie Miller says in the last line of Winning Time, it would have been nice if it were the conference finals because, alas, the Pacers got their revenge over the Knicks in the second round, only to face the Orlando Magic in a seven-game series in the Eastern Conference Finals that ended with a magic route in Game 7, sending the young Orlando Magic to the NBA Finals. The Pacers would not sniff the conf- would get to the Conference Finals again in 1998, fall to the Chicago Bulls, and of course reach the NBA Finals in 2000, losing to the Los Angeles Lakers in six games. The first of their six titles, the Pacers have yet to win the NBA Championship. This game has been a always been a clash of styles. Last year, the Magic entered the, the game against the Pacers as the top defense in the league. The Pacers, the top offense, and Orlando thumped them. In fact, in fact, Harry Halliburton struggled a ton in that series against the Orlando Magic. According to data from NBA.com, Tyrese Halliburton failed to score when Jalen Suggs was his primary matchup, missing all three of his shots. Of course, Suggs only matched up with him in one of those three games and play in the second in the second one. Gary Harris actually got the primary responsibility defending Tyrese Albert throughout their season series and had success. Albert scored only seven points, only 67 team points with 11 assists and two for nine shooting in 11 minutes and 30, se- 30 seconds of matchup minutes, according to NBA.com. So maybe the passing was a little bit better than it expected. But the Magic clearly know how to stop Tyrese Halliburton. The Magic clearly know how to put the vice grip on Halliburton while he played better in the second game. While he had a better showing in the second, third game, and certainly the third game, the Magic's defense was something that could stop the Pacers. So, this is a heavyweight battle or middleweight battle. Maybe it's a mid-card battle at this point in the Eastern Conference. Uh, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Owen Hart at the 19 at 1997 SummerSlam, or an early edition of The Rock versus Triple H for the Intercontinental Title, a preview for the battles that they would have for the Big Belt to come. Then again, Tyrese Halliburton was at NXT, not 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 on not on the Big Show, not on Raw, not on SmackDown. We love you, NXT. I'm just I'm just joking. But this is going to be a big series for the Orlando Magic. And it's fun to make all these wrestling references. It's fun to remember this rivalry and bring this rivalry back. The Orlando Magic will see the Indiana Pacers three times before Christmas. All this, remember all this in about a month. 
because on October 28th, the Indiana Pacers come to the Kia Center. And they should be welcomed with the booze that they deserve. They should be welcomed as if they were Dominic Mysterio. And if you watch wrestling, you get that reference because Dominic Mysterio does not even get to get a word in before he is loudly booed out of the building. The Orlando Magic return to Indianapolis on November 6th, and then they will get the return trip back at the Kia Center on November 13th. Again, boo the Pacers as loudly as they deserve. Because I'd boo too if I had to cheer for the Pacers. That's the truth. But the big game, of course, is at the very end of the season. The penultimate game of the season, April 11th in Indianapolis, because if the Magic and Pacers are once again tied in the standings heading into the final week, as we anticipate they will be, there will be no bigger game than that one April 11th. Because that game determines who might have the upper hand on the final day of the season. I believe the Pacers play the Cats. The Magic play in Atlanta against the Hawks. That is a huge game. That is a big moment, and this is a big series. The rivalry is on. And let me tell you something, brother. On October 28th at the Kia Center, what you going to do when Magic Mania runs wild on you? We'll chat a little bit about who is trying to catch the Magic. We'll look back at the standings, which is not something we've done very often. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, today's episode of Locked on Magic is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Magic season is coming up. We're about three weeks away now from the first, uh, uh, four, three and a half weeks away from the first home preseason game against New Orleans Pelicans. It is going to come, I think it's Pelicans or against first. I don't have the preseason mem- schedule memorized, but it's going to come pretty quickly. As I'm recording, Orlando City is taking on Charlotte FC. We've got the stretch run for Major League Soccer, as well as our ladies, the Orlando Pride in the NWSL. UCF is taking on Colorado at the bounce house in two weeks, and your only way to get into the game is through Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks will filter out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I've used Game Time before. It is the place I go to make sure I'm getting the best price on tickets if I if I'm trying to go to an event last minute. Game time, I know, will have the best prices for me, including a hot, hot ticket items uh, to make sure that I am getting the best seat in the house. Game time picks curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concert, comedy, theater, etc. It's not just sports. I look at events at Dr. Phillips Center, uh, as well as concerts like the Weezer concert coming up this Friday. Their all-in pricing uh, allows you to toggle in uh, features to show the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. They also gave you a digital panoramic view of your seats so you know what the stage, court, field, whatever is going to look like before you get there. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code LOCKEDONNBA. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic your first listen of the day. For your next listen, enjoy the Locked On NBA podcast. There is no offseason in the NBA, and Locked On NBA provides daily basketball analysis from national and local experts in 30 minutes or less. No one keeps you as informed and entertained as Locked On NBA. It's available on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. It's all part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As I mentioned on yesterday's show, the Orlando Magic should expect to be in the playoffs. Like, we're done. We're done missing the playoffs for a little while. The Magic are going to be a playoff team perennially for the next four or five years. we got a nice little run coming up, it, it feels like. But I don't want to sit here and say, I don't want to sit here and pretend that that is guaranteed. It feels guaranteed. It feels certain. We know the type of talent this team has. The Magic should be a playoff team for the far foreseeable future. But obviously, they've got to earn it. Obviously, they've got to take that next step. They've got to establish their position every single year. I think this is the most important point that we're going to make this season. Um, the, the most important point that we're going to make this season that we got to prove we can do it again. The Magic have to prove 
they can do it again. And then they got to do it again and again and again and again. The playoffs should become boring. It's no longer just the goal. But it is a challenge to do it year over year over year. And that's what the great teams do. Boston Celtics have done it year over year. The Heat are what they are because they've done it year over year. And so I think it's important to remember that while the Magic are trying to climb the ladder, they're trying to attack. They're trying to catch that car in front of them. There are a lot of cars behind them also trying to do the same thing. We'll talk about the outlook at Eastern Conference a little bit more in a minute. But there are teams that are dangerous, that could be the surprise teams in the league, and could be teams that could upset the apple cart a little bit and push the magic down. Like I've said before, uh, I, I do think the top eight teams in the East are going to stay the same. but. We can't deny that there are good teams that could peak and be a team that's dangerous to a team like Orlando. Maybe not the brightest of futures, but could be better than expected and could be that surprise team. A team like the Toronto Raptors. Um, you know, I feel like we've always talked about Toronto, frankly, in the context of the Scotty Barnes discussion. And I've always, A, I think Paolo Van Carrot's a better player than Scotty Barnes. Like, I, like, Disagree with me on that. I think what Paolo was asked to do is significantly more than what Scotty is asked to do. I think the numbers back that up. I think the people who want to argue that that Scotty is a more efficient player uh, after the Pascal Siakam trade, Scotty's numbers don't look nearly as good. And I know that's just twenty games, but uh, if you look at Scotty Barnes's numbers, he averaged nineteen point nine, eight point two, six point one, uh, eight point two rebounds, six point one assists per game on forty seven and a half, thirty four point one, seventy eight point one shooting splits. After the Siakam trade in January, he averaged 19.3 points, 7.7 rebounds, 7 assists per game on 46 and a half, 23, 84.2 splits. Um, that three-point shooting percentage dip is a big deal. Now, Barnes is a better playmaker. He is not a better scorer than Paolo. I think Paolo is still a better player because I think he has that playmaking in him and he has shown he can be efficient or more efficient at volume. Obviously, he's got to continue to get better. Um, these are two players that are all-star players. I want to sit here and say that very plainly. Scotty Barnes is a really good player. And the reason why I think the Raptors are still a dangerous team is that respect for Scotty Barnes. He is good enough to keep that team competitive. In fact, that whole team has a lot that will keep them competitive. Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett are both really good players. And the way Barrett played at the Olympics specifically makes me think the Raptors are still a very real candidate to be in the play-in tournament. Are they going to threaten the top eight? Eh, I'm not quite there. I think they're still about a 500 team. But I don't think we should write off Toronto so quickly. Uh, Yaka Pertle is a solid center. That is a veteran team. Now, injuries hit them, they'll be in trouble. But I don't think their depth is particularly strong. You know, Kelly Olenek is a solid veteran too. Uh, you know, But they have a solid core that will keep them competitive. You know, they haven't, you know, Darko Ryakovic is still in the second year, so their identity is still kind of a bit in flux, but that's still a team that knows how to how to win and how to play, even if they're not quite the same cast of characters. And even though they're still kind of, they, they still got young players trying to develop. I don't want to poo-poo Toronto at all. Obviously, we did a whole podcast on the Miami Heat. I don't think we can sleep on the Miami Heat. Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo are all-star level players. Tyler Hero, when he's healthy, is an all-star level player. They have that grit. Terry Rozier is a dangerous player as well. Kevin Love is still around. Jaime Hawkes had a really good year, rookie year. Miami among the play-in teams or the team, you know, like if there's a top seven, that's very clear. Miami is a team that could disrupt all of that. And again, I don't think Orlando is going to run and hide from Miami this year. I think Orlando does win the division. Don't, don't put me on blast for that. I do think Orlando does win the division. But Miami is still a very dangerous team. And, and again, we're not going to believe Miami is dead until they stop breathing. Like they're until until they're dead, until Jimmy Butler's gone, until maybe Bam out of bio is gone and they have to restart from scratch. That's that's not Miami. Miami is still a very, very good team, probably the most dangerous team. Obviously, you have Chicago. Uh, yes, they lose DeMar DeRozan, their most reliable offensive player. Yes, a lot of what Chicago's doing is betting on Zach Levine. Yes, Nikola Vucevic has started to show his age. He started to slow down a little bit. But look, Nikola Vucevic is still good for 20 and 8. Zach Levine, when he's healthy, 
the Magic know firsthand that when he, had, he gets hot, he gets supernova hot. And that's enough, again, to keep you competitive. They trade Alex Caruso, but Josh Giddy is not a bad player. And being able to use him as a point guard alongside a shooter like Zach Levine, alongside a center like Nikola Vucevic, with a shooting guard like Kobe White, with a defensive guard off the bench in Ayodosunu, like the difference between a lot of these teams is you got a lot of questions at the top and depth issues behind. The Bulls aren't going anywhere. The Bulls are a 500 team. Maybe they could peak to 45 wins and sneak into the seventh seed. I don't think that's super crazy to talk about. I don't think that's super crazy to say. Uh, and so you do have to think a little bit about Chicago. Atlanta still has Trey Young, and now he doesn't have DeJounte Murray, so maybe they'll make a little bit more sense. But Trey Young is a really good player. Jalen Johnson had his breakout last year. Uh, and Yeke Okongru is a solid player. And they add the number one pick in Zachary Risache. Um, I think that, you know, look, Trey Young is enough to keep you competitive. Trey Young is going to win games by himself. Now, can he do it 41, 42, 43, 44 times? I think that's the ultimate question and why Atlanta's in that play-in group. But look, Atlanta is a play-in team. Like, when they're healthy, that, like, Trey Young is one of those dudes. Like, he's just a score straight up. And I, I don't think we should be sleeping on Atlanta at all. The last team to talk about, I think the last team that has playoff potential is Charlotte. Uh, look, I've said this, I said this, I know last year and people kind of laughed at me a little bit about this and maybe, they, and maybe they were right in the end, but when the mellow ball is healthy, Charlotte is a playoff team. And look, Orlando's going to play Charlotte very early in the season for the NBA cup. I do not think their game in the NBA cup against Charlotte is a sure thing. It's going to be tough. Uh, the magic know firsthand how good Brandon Miller can be. And look, Charlotte's still got to add depth. That is their issue. If LaMelo Ball is out, they're toast. They're going to back, be back under 30 wins. With LaMelo Ball, they're probably a 30, you know, they're probably a 36, 37, 38, 39, maybe 40 win team. Without LaMelo Ball, they're a 25 win team. But Brandon Miller is really good. And again, Magic fans don't need to be told that. They saw it firsthand. And so I, I, I bring this up to just remind you all that the Magic have something to defend. And while, uh, yes, Orlando is better than all of these teams. My, they're better than Miami. They, on paper, they should be better than Miami. Miami is the only team that I am worried that on balance is better than Orlando. Or is, is equal to Orlando. Like Atlanta is not better than Orlando. Toronto is not better than Orlando. Uh, Charlotte's not better than Orlando. Chicago is not better than Orlando. But they're all gunning for what Orlando has. And the magic have to defend what they have. So they 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 need it to understand that they are attacking to try and get a top four seed. But they also need to remember they are defending their spot in the playoffs. Because the East, as we all know, is going to be very, very busy. I want to talk very briefly about the East and the challenge ahead for the Orlando Magic. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a moment. But first, today's episode of Locked on Magic is brought to you by friends over at FanDuel. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. FanDuel has great odds up on the NBA as we speak with the Magic's over-under set at 47 and a half wins. With the Magic at, I believe, plus 1,700 to win the Eastern Conference, minus 140 to win the Southeast Division. And, of course, one-point underdogs in their opening night game against the Miami Heat. There's plenty to look forward to already on FanDuel. So check out all the great odds. Check out all the great action over at FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So we're talking about the Eastern Conference in full. And like I, you know, like we joked a little bit at the top of the show, the, the Indiana Pacers and the Orlando Magic are kind of the next teams. Um, you know, the New York Knicks a little bit older. Um, you know, they're in that group too, but 
the Magic and the Pacers are clearly teams that are both playing for the now, but also very much geared up for the future. And, and you know, I think Boston is too. Boston's not going anywhere for a little while. Uh, there, you know, Philadelphia's got to win now. Miami's got to win now. Cleveland set up a little bit better for the future. We'll talk more about them late uh, tomorrow. But uh, you know, Orlando, Indiana, Cleveland, maybe New York, certainly Boston. That's your future top five in the Eastern Conference. You know, again, we'll see how draft picks shake out. We'll see how good Brandon Miller gets. I'm really high on Brandon Miller. He scarred me for life. I'm very high on him. Um, this is this is going to be a fun Eastern Conference. Um, this is going to be a wild Eastern Conference. And I know I have previewed this a million times, but I just want to keep reiterating this. The Magic last year at, with 47 wins with 46 wins, would have been the eight seed. If they didn't beat the Milwaukee Bucks, they'd be heading to Miami to take on the Heat as the eight seed. They won, they were the five seed. And there's even scenarios for them to get to the four seed. Obviously, in the last week of the season, they saw a chance to be the two seed. The Eastern Conference is going to be that tight again. And like I mentioned, I think it's going to be the same characters. It's going to be Boston. They're the heavy, heavy favorites to win the Eastern Conference. They're not going anywhere. The defending champs are here to defend and attack their championship. Um, the Milwaukee Bucks, the New York Knicks, the Philadelphia 76ers, that's widely considered the championship tier. And, you know, there'll be injuries that knock teams down and teams don't perform as well. I think Milwaukee has a lot of injury questions and all these teams have injury questions. New York's relying on Mitchell Robinson to be their starting center. And he played 31 games last year. He's played 31 games in two of the last three seasons. If he can't go, they're relying on Precious Achua and Jericho Sims. If they can't go, they got Julius Randle to play center. And he's coming off a major injury. The Milwaukee Bucks obviously are older. Da- Giannis Antetokounmpo has been hurt the last two playoffs. Damien Lillard is getting up there in age. Chris Middleton is coming off constant surgeries on his legs. The Milwaukee Bucks could easily implode again and be a four or five seed instead of a three seed. And that opens up a path. The Philadelphia 76ers are obviously trying to win now. Joel Embiid is in the prime of his career as the MVP. He played 30 plus games last year. He has to be healthy for them to be successful. But between Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and Paul George, there may not be a better top trio in, in the Eastern Conference. Everyone has to remember when the Sixers were healthy last year, they were the two seed in the East. Before Embiid's injury, they were the second best team in the East. They're not going anywhere. They're gonna. They're going. They're not going to be the seventh seed again. In other words, that's and then and that's kind of your championship tier. You know, Boston is a clear favorite, but your top four feels pretty set. As does that second tier group: Orlando, Cleveland, Indiana. They're all younger, younger-ish teams. Don Mitchell's a little bit older, but they're all younger-ish teams, eager to. Make it upset, eager to prove some doubters wrong, eager, eager to claim their spot among the East contenders. And you have to remember, with how congested the whole conference is, it's very easy for team. It's a lot easier now than I think in previous years for a team like Dallas to be the five seed and reach the NBA Finals. It's it's not crazy for something like that to happen because all these teams are so bunched up together. Remember. Orlando and Indiana both finished with 47 wins. Miami finished with 46 wins. Philadelphia finished with 46 wins. Like, these were all super tight races uh, at the end of the day. And winning the Southeast Division mattered for the Orlando Magic. It was a big freaking deal for the tiebreakers. The Miami Heat are going to be your eight seed. I, I just, I don't, you know, we could discuss the order. It wouldn't surprise me if the Magic are the seven seed. Wouldn't surprise me if they're the six. Wouldn't surprise me if they're the four. Wouldn't surprise me if they're the three. That's how close everything's going to be. But I think your eight in the Eastern Conference are really set. Again, no offense to Toronto. No offense to Charlotte. No offense to Chicago. No offense to Atlanta. I'll give Detroit their credit. I think Detroit could be sneaky good. I, I don't think they'll get all the way there this year, but it wouldn't be outlandish for them to be a really good, be better than people expect and get to like 30, 35 wins. Like that's not crazy to say. I don't think Kate Cunningham is really freaking good, but again, it's about injuries. Are they going to be healthy or do they have the depth that they need? You know, do they have players who are serious enough now? The eight in the East, I think are set. 
what we're going to discover over the next 82 games is the order in which they play, is the order in which they finish. And obviously that's what you do during the season. But the Magic are among that eight. I think that's the most important thing to remember. The Magic will be in the field and have an opportunity. But again, they got to earn it. They got to go out and earn it. And there's a lot of teams, a lot of teams eager to keep them from proving that they've got next. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Chris, find me on Twitter at Philip R underscore O M D. Uh, Philip's underscore O M D. Uh, uh, you can download the podcast wherever you download the podcast. Download podcasts, including Stitcher, TuneIn, Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of them. We sell the podcast to your podcast enabled listening device. For uh, you can also check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to us there if you want to see the podcast as well. For for the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can find us there on Twitter at OMagicDaily. And for even more Orlando Magic content, including my Atlantic Division preview, you can find that on my Patreon page at the Orlando Magic Hub at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. As always, thank you for your support. Now that you're done listening to me, be sure to check out the Locked On NBA podcast where the local experts keep you updated daily on all the biggest storylines ahead of the season. Find Locked On NBA on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. That's going to do for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Lockdown Magic. On our next episode, we're going to look back wistfully at the Orlando Magic playoff series with the Cleveland Cavaliers. What we learned about the Magic, what we learned about the Cavs. We'll do a crossover with Danny Cunningham of Lockdown Cavs on tomorrow's episode of Lockdown Magic. Until then, though. Until then. We'll see you all again for another episode of Lockdown Magic.